welcome back to geology classes and dear students in last class i was talking to you about classification of organisms based on sea loam body wall as well as segmentations and examples with diagrams and in this session we will discuss in detail about remaining concept which are present in ncert textbook dear students in case of segmentation i have used one important term that is the organisms they have divided internally as well as externally and that is known as what segmentation there is another term we can use for segmentation that is known as metameric segmentation it means segmentation as well as metameric segmentation both are the same but there is another term that is metamerism what is the metamerism metamerism is a phenomenon of segmentation you must remember these two important terms segmentation is also known as metameric segmentation the phenomenon of segmentation is known as metamerism based on the metamerism they have asked questions for our examinations so that you must differentiate metamorphism as well metamerism as well as segmentations and in this class we will discuss the organisms are also classified based on development of mouth as well as the anus that is about what the organisms which are classified based on development of what mouth and anus and in case of complete and incomplete digestive systems we have studied if only one opening is present that acts as both that is incomplete digestive system if organisms has two openings one is mouth and another one is anus that is known as what complete digestive system but here based on the development of mouth which it develops first based on that the organisms we have grouped into two types what are those two types means and first one is protostomes first one is what protostomes what it means the word itself indicates proto plus stomes and this word proto stomes these are mainly came from greek in the greek the meaning of proto means first what is the meaning of proto first that's why you have seen protozoa proto means first zoa means animals first living animals on the earth those are protozoans similar manner proto means what first and this stoma stoma means mouth during embryonic development if mouth develops first later there is a development of anus and such organisms are known as what protostomes in protostomes what happens mouth develops first later there is a development of what anus and such organisms are known as protostomes what are the example for protostomes and these protostomes consist of and these organisms are belonging to some important phyla those are anelidans arthropoda these are also known as what jointed animals and another one is mollusca do you know what are the example for anelida the familiar example for anelida is earthworm for arthropoda which is the best example 
insects should take crab and uh, crab insects and scorpions all these jointed animals belong to arthropoda and mollusca for that we can take common example that is the octopus in these three phyla first there is a development of mouth later there is a anus as so these three phyla organisms are known as protostomes i think you got the meaning of protostomes you should remember this much and it is not that much of heavy during the development of organisms if mouth develops first and those are known as what protostomes and second type is there that is known as deuterostomes and the second type that is deuterostomes and this deuterostomes the word it is also derived from greek in the greek the meaning of deutero means second what is the meaning of deutero that is second stomo means mouth that means during embryonic development which first develops during embryonic development there is a first development is anus and the second development is mouth earlier there is a development of mouth later there is a development of anus and that is considered as what deuterostomes should remember this much in deuterostomes mouth develops later that means first that there is a development of anus and such organisms are known as deuterostomes if mouth develops first that is proto if anus develops first that is known as what deutero what are the example for deuterostomes and this is the one characters is quite common in higher animals examples you should take echinoderms two cordex and these echinoderms i have heard about starfish that belongs to echinoderms and cordex all the fishes amphibians reptiles apes and mammals belonging to cordex and these cordex and in echinoderms there is a first development of what anus later there is development of mouth that's why these are known as deuterostomes can you tell me whether human being is deuterostomes or protostomes is it the correct answer here we are belonging to deuterostomes because mammals we are the human beings belonging to mammal that mammal class belong to the chordata and chordates are example for what deuterostomes and these are two group of organisms they have classified based on development of mouth as well as anus and these things are not prescribed in ncert textbook even though this is these concepts are very necessary for competitive examinations and this is the first basic characters and later after the this kind of divisions later we will discuss about the classification of organisms based on what circulatory system based on what circulatory system earlier we have classified the organisms based on digestive system in this session we will discuss how scientists made the classification of organisms based on circulatory system and first of all we should come to know that what you mean by circulation then what is the circulation the circulation is a physiological process in which there is a movement of blood the blood is flowing 
to the various organ through through which organs through heart and blood vessels because this is very important process for the cells for their nutrition as well as the oxygen and here what is circulation the circulation is the movement of blood transport of blood and spreading of blood and that blood is moved to the various organ or the tissue through the heart and blood vessel and that process is known as what circulation and that circulation mainly done by one of the most vital organ that is the heart heart pump the blood to the various organ as a result all the tissues cells they will receive the nutrition oxygen as well as they can send various waste as well as carbon dioxide based on this circulatory system the scientists they have made two types of classification what are those two types of classification means first one open type of circulation and second one is closed type of circulations and first of all we should go through what is open type of circulation in case of open type of circulation in these organisms in these organisms the heart which can pump the blood which pump the blood and that blood is can goes to various organ without the blood vessels without blood vessels and this blood is directly dumped into the tissues and heart pump the blood to the various organ what happens all the tissues or any kind of organs they are bathed they are bathed in blood and such kind of circulation is known as open type of circulations there what if we do open type of circulation in this condition the heart pump the blood to the various tissues or the organs without blood vessels and blood vessels are absent and this blood is directly sent to the tissue then all the tissues and organs they are completely bathed means they are completely sink in the blood and that kind of circulation is known as open type of circulation and for this open type of circulation the examples are it is quite common that is phylum arthropoda and next one is after the arthropoda next one is echinodermida and mollusks and arthropoda echinodermida and mollusks these are the phyla they can exhibit open type of circulation in this open type of circulation how organism pump the blood we should explain with the help of what diagram if diagrams are very easy to understand this kind of informations and here in case of circulation which is the pumping organ heart is pumping organ in open type of circulatory system which is absent blood vessels are absent because of the reason it can pump the blood to the various organ how it is present means it should take it is a heart okay this is the heart and this heart has arteries and these arteries they can carry oxygenated blood for the tissues okay and these are what arteries and this is the arteries what is the main function of arteries arteries are very necessary 
to carry oxygenated blood for the tissues. And where tissues are present? These are the tissues. These are the cells, and this is the tissues or any kind of organ. Okay. And these are what tissues, or you can say organ. These are tissues or organs. And next our duty is, and this heart having valves. And what is the function of these valves? And these valves are helpful for to prevent the bad flow of blood. For example, you might be noticed this is quite common in human beings. When you take the food, that food is enters into the stomach. But the food which is present in the stomach. It won't come back to the esophagus because we have this pincher, and that is known as cordyx pincher. They can prevent bad flow of food from stomach to esophagus. Same thing, whatever the blood once it is entered into the tissue, that blood cannot bad flow into the heart because there is a presence of what warts. And this heart is mainly consists of what blood, and this blood. Comes to the oxygenated blood goes to the arteries, and these arteries send the blood for what tissues. Now all the tissues and cells they completely bath in blood. Is that it? They're taking bath. They completely seep in the blood, and this kind of circulation is known as what open type of circulation. This character is mainly found in. Invertebrates like Arthropoda, Echinodermata, and Mollusca, and this is the blood. I got it, and this diagram explains beautifully about open type of circulation. And these are the arteries. These are what arteries, but there is no any blood vessels. Absence of blood vessel, heart pump the blood directly to the tissues. When you can send directly to the tissue, all the tissues get bathed in the blood, and that is the open type of circulation. You must remember the examples. Those are arthropoda, echinodermata, and mollusks. And after the open type of circulation, which is the next one, that is second type of circulation, that is closed type of circulation. And the dear students, based on these examples and definitions, they may be arise so many questions. So that it is better to remember the concept of every content of this topic. And here, what do you mean by closed type of circulation? There is a little difference. Here, blood vessels are absent and open, and these are replaced by the blood vessels. In case of closed type of circulation, what happens? Here, heart. Pump the blood, or pump the blood to the tissues or any organs through the blood vessels. Blood vessels or capillaries, and where you can send the blood and heart pump the blood. That blood pass through the blood vessels and capillaries and reaches to tissues or organs. And this is the one advanced characters we have seen in higher animals. Those are cordyx. And what do we mean by closed type of circulation? In this type of circulation, the organisms it can pump the blood, heart pump the blood to the various organ through blood vessels as well as capillaries. And such type of circulation is known as closed type of circulations. We have not seen this closed type of circulations. We have seen this closed type of circulation in higher animals. Those are cordyceps. Those are what cordyceps. And cordyceps are the very highly advanced animal. They having this kind of 
close type of circulation it is also seen another invertebrates because invertebrates generally they can exhibit open type of circulation but there is very interesting phyla that is annelida this annelida belonging to non chordates even though it can show close type of circulation how it is present what are the blood vessels are present and about the annelids we will discuss in structural organization in animal pocket and here just to remember the chordates and annelids are the best example for close type of circulations dear students now we can go through diagram because the diagram explains very nice that the words isn't it and here what is the difference between open and close it is very little bit variation that is present so far capillaries and blood vessels how it is present similar it is also half okay this half pump the blood and that blood goes to the tissues through the what these are arteries these are what arteries and there is also the use of what wall this wall prevent bad flow of blood it is the another characteristic of uh, walls are present in all animals and later the interesting thing is there is a presence of what ornaments this is what we can a this is our organ or group of tissues and this group of organs how they are connected means they have connected through the various blood vessels these are what blood vessels and these blood vessels they branched many times later converted into very minute to tubulars those are known as capillaries and these one capillary it is another capillary it is another kind of what blood vessels and these blood vessels divide like this to produce what blood vessels and later they have connected like this and this is what these are all blood vessels or capillaries now and this is about what organ and this organ simply have drawn with lines okay and this is what here this is the organ and this is also organ for types now and this is the entire one organ and this organ receive the blood not directly from the heart it can send through the small blood vessels when this heart pump the blood and that blood goes to the oxygenated blood goes to the arteries from arteries it enters into what capillaries and these capillaries they can receive the blood from blood vessels and from this capillaries and these organs they will take the whatever the things they want and from this also same thing these organs they can carry is oxygenated blood goes to the capillaries and what is the main difference is the difference is such in open type of circulation all tissues and organs completely bathed in blood are sinked in the blood but in case of close type of circulation these blood and blood uh, all these organs and tissues they will get nutrients or whatever it may be through the blood vessels this is the major difference i think you got it if you want again i will give another basic example and heart is just like a dam you should compare the heart is just like a dam 
and this gap is completely filled with what? Water. Due to heavy raining, if there is a flood occurs, then what happens? That flood results all water get into the village. When all water get into the village, what happens? All houses get a path in the water. That is kind of open type of circulations. Because of flood, and all houses and animals and the human beings completely bathed in water or completely sink in the water, that is a kind of what? Open type of circulations. Instead of that, from this dam, if you pass the water through pipelines, these are two pipelines, and this water not get that, that water is not goes to any uh, uh, broader area, and this pipelines send the water through every house without any bathing, and that is the one kind of what closed type of circulations, and these are two major types of classification we have done based on circulatory system and here in this concept you must remember examples with definitions once again i will briefly explain about these things one is organisms are classified based on what development of mouth and anus if mouth develops first those are protostomes if anus develops first those are deuterostomes and based on the open type of circulation what happens if heart pump the blood directly to the tissues or organs without any blood vessel that is open type of circulation examples are arthropoda and echinoderms and molluscans if heart pump the blood to the various organ or tissue through the blood vessels those are known as what closed type of circulation and this is the Brief explanation about animal kingdom. And next, the organisms you have classified based on another very important character that is notochord. And this is how you must remember all these types and examples. It helps a lot for your uh, future examinations as well as topics. And another thing, another thing is, and you people don't scare the words biology because it is very interesting subject compared to other. And if you perfect in diagrams and some of the terminologies, you will get good score in case of biology. Now, we will discuss the classification of organisms based on another fundamental character that is presence and absence of notochord. That is what? Notochord. What do I mean by notochord? Where it is present? We should remember these points. And here, what is notochord means? Notochord it is a rod-like structure. It is a rod-like structure. Where it is present? It is present dorsal side of the 
organism what is notopod notopod is a rod like structure which is located on dorsal side of the animal generally this notopod is developed from meso dar in earlier class during the study of development of organisms based on embryonic layer there is a presence of three layer one is ectoderm endoderm mesoderm in the middle layer that is the mesoderm some of the mesodermal cells they have developed into like this rod like structure that is known as what notochord where this notochord is present this notochord is present at dorsal side what is dorsal side means you can take any animal it has two surface one what we call it as back side that is called it as what dorsal surface and front part is known as what ventral surface how it is present means i will take one embryonic stage of any animal generally that is appears like this okay this is a one animal okay and this is what dorsal surface and this is the back part is there you can consider this is the dorsal is not visible here and this is what dorsal side got it and this lower part is there this is ventral side are you got it and the generally with what they told where notochord is present this notochord is mainly present at the cell side how it is present it is just look like a rod like structure how it is it is become like this it is a rod like structure it is present at the dorsal surface and this is known as notochord i got it what is notochord it is a rod like structure which is located on dorsal side of the organism that is known as what notochord and this notochord mainly developed from meso the based on this notochord the organisms they have classified into two types what are those two types means one is chordates and another one is non chordates what do we mean by chordates based on the presence and options of notochord the organisms we have mainly classified into two types based on what this notochord if notochord is present if notochord is present and those are known as chordates if notochord is absent this tubular part notochord is there if this notochord is absent then it become what it become non chordates is it in earlier class non chordates having how many phyllas 10 phyllas and those are protozoans porifera cilindrata dinofora platyhelminthes ascelminthes anelida arthropoda echinodermata mollusca these 10 phyllas which comes under non chordates because these phyllas does not have such notochord that's why these are grouped under non chordates these non chordates is also known as invertebrates they don't have a vertebral column that's why these are known as invertebrates and next one is if you go for fishes amphibians reptiles apes and mammals these organisms consist of what very well developed backbone that is called as what notochord that's why these are called as what chordates and for your examinations for your theory examination every time they will ask many questions based upon this concept differentiate between chordates as well as 
non cadets they are students and what are the basic characteristics that make difference between cadet and non cadet we will discuss in detail here okay first characteristic is what in case of cadets which is present here no to cadets here present but in case of non cadets and this not a cord is what absent that's why those are known as what non cordes and second characters and this cordes mainly consists of four nerve cord mainly consists of four nerve cord where this nerve cord is present here above the motor cord there is another hollow tubular part is present and this is known as cord nerve cord this is known as what nerve cord it represents what c n s what it means central nervous systems how we have the brain and the spinal cord together we are called as what central nervous system in case of cord that is called as what nerve cord and this nerve cord is found both in cordes as well as non cordes but there is a slight variation what is that variation in case of cordes this nerve cord is dorsal side in case of cordes where nerve cord is present it is present at what dorsal side and another one is it is hollow Hello means what? It's a tubular part. It has space inside. That's why it is known as what? Hello. And next one is how many nerve cords are present in case of cord? It means only there is a one. That is single tubular dorsal cell that is present of another part. That is what nerve cord. And this nerve cord is also present in. in vertebrates but it can shows some other peculiar characters what are those characters in case of non cordes how nerve cord is present where is nerve cord is present it is present at the ventral side it is directly opposite to cordes we have the motor cord at we have the nerve cord at dorsal surface but these invertebrates they having at ventral side for this we will take the best example of earthworm earthworm and in case of molluscans all kind of animals they have in nerve cord at ventral surface front cord they have next one is and this nerve cord in case of non cordes it become solid it is not having any cavity like cords and next one is and this nerve cord it has in double number they have two but in case of cord it has only one but in case of non cord it it has two and for this you should take this special example this is the transverse section of what earthworm when you take the longitudinal section of sorry longitudinal section of earthworm what you will get you will get what brain and this brain is nothing but what ganglia and these are the ganglia like this each segment they have for nerve rings isn't it and this nerve rings having nerve cords and how many nerve cords are present here it is single or it is double it has double this is the one nerve cord it is another nerve cord in case of non cordes these are the different nerves in case of non cordes generally consists of how many nerve cords two nerve cords but in case of cordes it has only single this is the major difference between corded as well as non corded the next important feature is in case of cordes they having gills they having what 
gills gets the help using what respirations human beings we are using for lungs for respiration but uh, some of the fishes in early embryonic stage of all the chordates and they can respire through the gills gets and gills are different gills gets are different the apertures which are present in the pharynx which consists of gills that is known as what gill slits and where it is present in the pharynx region it is present here and this is the one gill slit this is another like this and these are all what gill slits and this gill slits is the peculiar characteristic of what cordex but in case of non cordex they have it what gills and this are will be having the, like this apertures okay and this apertures consists of four small cavity like structure those are the gill slits they help in exchange of gas molecules but in case of non cordates there is gill slits are absent gill slits are what absent instead of gill slits they are having gills for exchange of gas molecules and next another characteristic is in case of all the chordates all the chordates they are having another character that is post anal tail that means all the chordates they are having anal tail you might be see fishes they have a tail that is tail fin in case of amphibians we may be look at under the salamander they have the tail like this all the chordates they have got tail that is known as what post anal tail and this part is known as post anal tail the tail present after anus post means after anal means it is an external pore through which it can eject the waste material that part is known as what post anal tail you might be seen in cattle and monkey and all cases of horses and donkey generally they have a what tail that is known as what post anal tail is the characteristic of for cordates but this post anal tail is absent in post anal tail Post anal tail is absent in case of what non cordex. And another characteristic is in case of cordex, they have what heart. And where this heart is present, in case of cordex, heart is located at ventral side. You should take in mind this: we have the heart at the ventral surface, not at the dorsal surface. This is the another peculiar characteristic of all chordates you should take any chordates from fishes to human beings all chordates they have a cord at ventral side but in case of non chordates what happens in this animal the heart is present at dorsal side when it is present it is present at dorsal side because in case of invertebrates they have an exoskeleton that exoskeleton is very hard it protect the this kind of vital organs and in case of human beings and any kind of mammals or any kind of chordates and our heart is mainly located inside the ribs in between the lungs there is a uh, space present in that space there is a presence of what heart like this in case of chordate and in case of non chordate heart is present at the dorsal side it is the another significant characteristic of what chordates and this is all major difference made two kind of organisms that is chordates as well as non chordates and this diagram is very necessary for your competitive examinations and you should remember and these are what Yes. Here, just you recall all the points, and what is note about 
it is a rod tubular part it is a rod part which is present at the dorsal side of the animal that is called as notochord it is derived from mesoderm based on this noto based on the presence and options of notochord they have differentiated as chordates and non chordates chordates have a notochord but these are option nerve cord is double dorsal halo single but in case of non chordates it become ventral solid and it is dorsal set chordates have gill slits for respiration but option in the non chordates instead of gill slits they have gills and post anal pair is present and post anal pair is absent these are major difference between chordates as well as non chordates dear student all these are basic characters found in all animals that's why they have classified into various group and overall we have classified the organisms based on body wall based on the cello based on level of organization based on segmentation cello and notochord digestive system circulatory system as well as reproductive system as we know that organisms we have classified into two types based on reproduction that is sexual and asexual organisms about these two things we will discuss in the and next concept or next topic and these are the main basic characters and their classifications and finally you will go to last concept and based on all these characters from earlier class to up to this this class they have made one chart you must remember this chart is very vital for all competitive examinations and what is that chart how should remember means is to go through Dear learners, this is the last concept of uh, classification of organisms based on fundamental characters. And uh, based casually, this kind of question they will ask every year and for the various examinations. And the first thing is, uh, what they have done the chart, on which basis they have done means, and this major chart they have done based on three characters. One is level of organization and second one is based on symmetry third one is based on serum based on only these three specific characters they have made this kind of enter branch go for animal kingdom now we will discuss in brief in this last session and first of all we should go for there are five important kingdoms are present and in that one is animalia isn't it this animalia kingdom consists of variety of animals and this kingdom animalia they have classified into two groups based on level of organization actually we have done cellular protoplasmic tissue organ and organ system but here what we have done is we have classified based on level of organization that is cellular level of cellular level of 
organization it is what based on level of organization based on level of organizations we have grouped cellular level of organization and another one is here tissue level next organ level next organ systems about all these things we have learned in the earlier class dear students if you don't know the concept of earlier classes you won't understand this kind of branching so that what i want to request is you people must be perfect in the last two classes what are the things i explained in the classes then you will get this kind of information and in this chart kingdom and media we have divided into two main sub groups one is cellular level of organization and another one is tissue organ organ system for this cellular level of organization what are the pillars are example means the pillar that is for phylum foriferra and this phylum foriferra is also known as what sponges and next one is second group and this level of tissue organ organ system they have classified based on second character that is what symmetry based on the symmetries we have done how many types of classification three type of classification one is asymmetry radial symmetry and bilateral symmetry and this phylum foriferra is also known as sponges these are example for what asymmetry now we should go for this one when it is example for asymmetry next based on the symmetry we have to fit to two categories one is radial symmetry and another one is bilateral symmetry that is what bilateral bilateral symmetry and what are the phyla are example for radial symmetry in earlier class we have learned that there are two important phyla are present and those two phyla are cylindrata is also known as idaria and another phyla is very small phyla that is timocora and these two phyla they can exhibit radial symmetry and what is radial symmetry in our examples we have learned in the last class and next one is based on the zero these bilateral symmetry organisms again we have classified into three types and what is that that is the classified based on third character that is what zero and what are those characters one is a zero means this organism does not have any body cavities what are the example for a zero means that is phylum lactate helminthes and these are also known as what black worms and this black helminthes they does not have any body cavity that's why these are known as what a zero means there is another type of zero means present that is pseudo zero mate what is that pseudo means false or not well developed zero and in which phyla they can show this kind of zero means that is phyla ascal mantis and this ascal mantis they are also known as what round worms and last category is there that is zero mates and these zero mates is also known as what u zero mates or true zero mates
and these telomeres has various fibers. And what those are various fibers? One is annelida, and the other one belong to this fiber. And after the annelida, next fiber is arthropoda jointed animals. After the arthropoda, next fiber is Mollusca. After the mollusca, next phyla is what? Echino, dermata. Starfish is considered this echinodermata. After the last phyla, that is chordate. And just to count how many phyla are present in animal kingdom, in earlier class, I told you people. There are 11 major phyla are present, and this is the Coriferae is the one, and Cinnamonidae two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What about another one is that is the protoplasmic grid of organization that is known as what phylum protozoa. Dear students. And these protozoans are not uh, grouped under the kingdom because it can show ambiguity. And these protozoans they can exhibit like a plants, presence of chlorophyll, they can prepare the whole food material. That's why Gold Hands is a scientist. He grouped these protozoans under kingdom protista. Because of that reason, in our syllabus, they have given from Coriferae to up to Cordates. And this schematic representation of classification of organisms is very important every time. Based on this, they will ask main question, CET, for theory, etc. And this is about classification of organisms based on fundamental characters. And this is the all detailed information of organisms. In an upcoming class, we will discuss in detail about from protozoa to up to cordis. Thank you so much.